Yo, what is up guys? It is Nick or the Notorious Fantasy back in today with another fantasy football video. Today's video, I got the week 12 wide receiver start or sit video, the most anticipated video up on this channel every single week. Now, before I get into these wide receiver start or sit decisions for this week, I'd like to give you guys a word from my sponsor, OverlayDFS.com. OverlayDFS.com is my favorite way to play daily fantasy football. Now, my favorite game on this website is the progressive game, where every single week if the bonus does not get hit the money keeps on rolling and rolling and rolling on until you eventually and someone hits that beautiful 12 and 0 to get that progressive bonus as you can see here in the 22 dollar game which is the best game to play this week if you go 12 and 0 and all those stars align you can get over eight grand winning in that game now if you don't end up going that beautiful 12 and 0 don't you worry because if you're in the top 10 percent you get nine times your buy-in at all levels. $2.5, you get $18. $22 entry, you get $180. And if you enter the $109 game and you hit that beautiful top 10%, you get nine times your money at $900. Now, there's also another game with best record wins. You enter $11, the top 10% get $90. And that top prize, you get $100. So it's going to look beautiful on there right now. But obviously, that price is going to keep going up as more people people join and enter pretty much you're not even playing against anyone you're pretty much just playing against yourself you're playing against the board and you got to make sure that you get just a good enough record to hit that money now I'm going to explain how it necessarily works right here this week now I'm going to join the $22 game pretty much how it works all you got to do is pick 12 of these players out of a huge selection of players and plus three alternates. So you got to hit that beautiful 12 and 0 record to get that huge bonus. Or obviously you can get nine and three or seven and five. It's different every single week. That would make you hit that beautiful and get that nine times your money. So one of the games here and one of the strategies I like to do is I like to go with Drew Brees over Russell Wilson here. And then I scroll down to the wide receivers and I select Michael Thomas because I'm going to be stacking my quarterback with my wide receiver. That is my my favorite thing to do on this website. So make sure you guys check out OverlayDFS.com. Link down below in the description. Goodbye, my friends. And we are back. Make sure to check out OverlayDFS.com. Link down below in the description. But let's get right into this week 12 wide receiver start or sit decisions. We start out with the first game, Thursday Night Football in Houston. Colts at Texans. I'm going to be starting up T.Y. Hilton in this game. Right now he's got the GTD and we ain't talking about that Jim Tan laundry, the GTL like in the Jersey Shore. No. GTD means game time decision. Will T.Y. Hilton be able to play in this game as I am recording this video at 12 at night? I have no fucking idea if T.Y. Hilton is going to play. Am I confident in it? Probably not. And T.Y. Hilton is likely going to be riding the pine this week against the Texans. Now, Zach Pascal, he has the eh next to his name because I'm not too sure what the fuck to do. He had two good games. And then the next two games after that, he shit the bed. He needed those huggies. Now, T.Y. Hilton plays. There is no way in fuck you are starting Zach Pascal. Now, for the Texan side of the ball, you're obviously going to be firing up DeAndre Hopkins. D-Hop, one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. One of your top 12, or one of your probably your first fucking round draft pick in fantasy football, unless you traded for him. DeAndre Hopkins has been balling out of control the last couple of weeks. I think that last week, that fucking thing was bullshit. He should have scored that goddamn touchdown. That was some pass interference, and he was a bit pissed off, and so were you if you own DeAndre Hopkins. Now, Will Fuller, on the other hand, is going to be a start for me if he plays. He's been missing a lot of time, and when he's out there, you know, Deshaun Watson loves to spread spread out that ball, and he loves Mr. Will Fuller, so if Will Fuller gets that nod, I would throw him straight into my lineup. Next game here, we got the Dolphins at the Cleveland Browns, a not-too-interesting game, but a pretty interesting game for fantasy football. Now, I'm going to be starting down up Mr. Odell Beckham Jr. Now, we saw last week Odell should have scored that fucking touchdown, and his fantasy game would have looked great before all hell broke loose, and the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Cleveland Browns went to fucking Monday Night Raw, okay? But with that said, Odell Beckham looked good. You want to know who else looked good in that game? Javis Juice Landry. And the juice was loose last Thursday, just like it was lo loose a fucking like 30 years ago with OJ Simpson. Now Jarvis Landry should be able to go up against the Dolphins and give him a 1-2 Mayweather and smack him up like they're, like one of their teammates did to someone. You know, that's a, that's a wink right there. 
bit of a kick, actually, not a smack, but you guys know what I'm saying here. Now, Devontae Parker for the Dolphins has been the king of consistency, and consistency is key in fantasy football. Devontae Parker has been going balls deep in defenses the last couple of weeks, and by the last couple of weeks, I mean pretty much every single game Brian Fitzpatrick has been scoring. He's been score or been playing. He's been scoring touchdowns. He's been catching balls, getting 100 plus yards, looking like a certified fucking beauty, and you better believe I'm starting him in fantasy football this week against the Cleveland Browns. Next game here, we got the Lions at the Washington Redskins. Now, I'm going to be starting up Kenny G, Kenny Galladay in this game. Kenny Galladay last week was not that good of a start. He kind of disappointed. Marvin Jones was balling out. Now, Marvin Jones actually in PPR is the better wide receiver this year over Kenny Galladay. They're both wide receivers in the top 20, so they're both looking good. And this week against the terrible Washington Redskins, I love both of these backs, not backs, wide receivers, even with Jeff fucking Driscoll being the quarterback. Jeff Driscoll last week was a top 10 quarterback in fantasy football. I believe he was a top 5 quarterback in fantasy football. Who the fuck is that guy? Well, obviously, I know who the fuck he is, and you probably know who the fuck he is, but who, how the fuck did he do that? I am not sure, but Kenny Galladay and Marvin Jones against the terrible and washed up Washington Redskins and Josh Norman, Mr. Marvin Jones and Kenny Galladay should be able to go balls deep in that defense. Now, starting on the other side of the ball for the Washington Redskins, you guys know I love my main man, Scary Terry McLaurin, F1 Terry McLaurin, looking like a goddamn butte last week, still playing good against the Jets. It does not fucking matter who the quarterback is. Dwayne Trashcan, Hashkin and that terrible offensive line does not fucking matter because I think that my man, Scary Terry, should still be able to ball out of control. Now, obviously, you got to temper those expectations because the Redskins offense looks like a sack of shit that they just threw out there, but it does not matter because Scary Terry is so good that the talent outweighs the fact that the team is so bad that Scary Terry can still perform fantasy football, but obviously not that beautiful wide receiver from one we were seeing when Case Keenum was throwing him the rock. Next game here, we got the Raiders at the New York Football Jets in the Meadowlands. Now, I'm going to be starting up Tyrell Williams in this game. Tyrell Williams has been a pretty safe guy to go ahead and play every single week. Derek Carr loves throwing him the ball, and I like playing him in fantasy football. He's a lot safer to me, and he has a big, big play option in this game against the Jets defense. Now, Jamison Crowder is, has been literally tearing up defenses, tearing him a new asshole, and looking fucking fantastic. Famous Jamison Crowder is going to play balls to the wall against the Oakland Raiders. All right, I almost just broke my voice right there, but it does not fucking matter because Jamison Crowder is going to literally destroy the Oakland Raiders. Sammy Bo Sammy Mono, Sammy Darnold, fucking Kid C Ghost, whatever you like to call Sam Darnold, he's been balling with Jamison Crowder. They have some type of a love connection. Jamison Crowder, like I always say, is going to develop Mono from this type of love connection. Jamison Crowder has been balling out just like his name was John Brown on the Bills, okay? Now I'm going to be sitting down Robbie Anderson. Now Robbie Anderson is much more of a coin flip to me. Now you could start him. You're rolling the fucking dice. You're putting it all on black, and you're praying to the fantasy football gods. Please, please let Robbie Anderson score, and if he doesn't fucking score, he might just shit the bed for you. So that's why he's a sit for me. Now, Hunter Renfro has actually been okay, but I'm not trying to start a guy that I think is probably just going to score eight fucking fantasy points. He could probably have a better game against the Jets, but I don't necessarily trust it after he's been not playing as well the last two games than he has been playing in the past. Next game here, we got the Giants. At the Chicago Bears. Now, before I get into this game, I'd like to ask if you guys could please click that subscribe button down below if you have enjoyed thus far. And I'm going to be starting up Golden Tate in this game. Now, Golden Tate has been fire, super hot fire, and he's pissed off. He's lighting a fire right under the ass of the Giants organization. He said he's tired of losing. I'm fucking tired of this shit. All right, that's what he's saying. He's saying he's done losing. And Golden Tate's going to go out there against the Chicago Bears that may be having fucking kissing titties. Trubisky might be sitting on the bench. It might be Chase Daniel. Who fucking knows? Golden Tate should be able to ball out of control. And the same thing is said for Darius Slayton. Now, if Sterling Shepard is out of this game, Darius Slayton should be able to play well. We saw Darius Slayton before the bye week go for 30 fucking PPR points. He stuck his dick straight through that defense. And Darius Slayton may be able to do that against the Bears. But you got to temper your expectations on both these guys because the Bears defense is still pretty good. Now, Allen Robinson, you're going to be starting him, but you're going to be having to be fucking holding on to something or putting something in your mouth because you may just get fucked right in the ass by Allen Robinson, okay? The fact is, the Giants' defense is fucking terrible, but if it's Mitch Trubisky looks bad, Chase Daniel looks bad, Matt Nagy looks like a goddamn clown, okay? And Allen Robinson may just shit the bed because of all of that. Obviously, you can pray the hopes, the fact that Allen Robinson is such a good wide receiver. Obviously, last week, he got his ass clamped down by Jalen Ramsey, but I think that Allen Robinson, at the end of the day, will do okay enough to warrant a start. I'm going to be sitting down Anthony Miller and Taylor Gabriel. The other 
other wideouts for the Chicago Bears. Next game here is the Panthers at the Saints. And last week we saw the absolute shit fest of Kyle Allen playing like God damn trash against the Atlanta Falcons. But this week, I think that Kyle Allen is going to be pissed the fuck off against the New Orleans Saints. Now, I'm going to be starting off DJ Moore in this game. DJ Moore has been absolutely playing fucking fantastic the last couple of weeks with Kyle Allen. DJ Moore is clearly the wide receiver one in that team and the wide receiver that Mr. Kyle Allen has a love affair for. DJ Moore has been playing so well that I love him this week against the New Orleans Saints. Now, Curtis Samuel, he's got the eh because he's the wide receiver two on a team with Kyle Allen who looked like fucking trash. I'm also going to be starting Michael Thomas, but obviously that is a no-brainer. He should be locked and loaded in your lineup every single week. He may be the best wide receiver in the NFL right now, and he's certainly one of the best wide receivers in fantasy football. And I'm going to be sitting down Ted Ginn because if you're I don't know what you're doing, what type of crack you're smoking. If you're starting Ted Ginn, you're rolling that dice in a 20 or 30 team league or something starting Ted Ginn. So let him ride the pine, that old man. Now, next game here is the Seattle Seahawks at the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, this game, it gets a bit complicated here because there's a lot of injuries in this game. Tyler Lockett is a start given he plays. Now, it seems like last week before the bye against the San Francisco 49ers, he was looking all pissed off on the sideline. He was like, motherfucker, I'm hurt. I think I'm fucking done. It looks like my leg's about to get fucking cut off or something. And then out of nowhere, they're like, Pete Carroll's like, that's my chewing gum impression. I'm not doing the other thing that it could sound like I'm doing. Fucking Tyler Lockett is sitting there and they're like, and, or Pete Carroll's sitting there and he's telling us, Tyler Lockett may be able to play in this game. All right, I don't know. That kind of sounded like Bill Clinton, okay? I don't think that was a good Bill Clinton fucking inspiration, but it does, or uh, not inspiration. Um, I don't even know what the word is because I'm so goddamn dumb right now. But Tyler Lockett, if he plays, should be able to go balls deep in this Eagles defense, okay? But likely, Tyler Lockett, in my humble opinion, will not be able to get the go in this game. Now, DK Metcalf, if that is true, should be able to ball out against the Philadelphia Eagles. I like him a lot, given he would be the wide receiver one on that team. Now, there's another man on this team. He was traded from the New England Patriots, and his name is Flash. Ah, savior of the universe, Flash fucking Gordon. If Tyler Lockett is out of throwing that guy in my lineup and praying to the gods that he stays off the weed uh, and balls out against the Philadelphia Eagles, I would love Flash Gordon in this game, given... Given, 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 Tyler Lockett is out now. If Tyler Lockett is in, and you play Flash Gordon, you might be smoking some of what Flash Gordon used to be smoking over there in Cleveland. Now, I'm going to be sitting down Alshon Jeffrey. He may or may not be able to fucking play in this game. If you want to know who may or may not play in this game, Nelson Aguilar's hands. Nelson Aguilar honestly has, like, wide-open touchdowns. You think that the fucking heavens are giving him the ball because of how fucking open he is. He The ball just comes right into him, into the bread basket, and he fucking gets the bag, and he fumbles it. He fumbles it every single time. He can't catch the fucking ball. And just, I don't know if you guys saw that Twitter clip from a couple of months ago where fucking Nelson Aguilar was playing like such shit, and this dude caught a baby in Philadelphia out the window, and he was like, you want to know who wouldn't have done that? Nelson Aguilar. And that's fucking true. Nelson Aguilar is terrible. Next game here, we got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the Atlanta Falcons. Now, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers were looking not too hot last week, but it's okay because the Buccaneers this week against the Atlanta Falcons should be able to have a much better game. Obviously, the Falcons' defense has been super hot fucking fire the last two games after the bye week, but I still like all the wideouts in this game. Mike Evans and Chris Godwin have been top guys this season, both been balling out of control. It doesn't matter if Jameis Winston is throwing picks because Mike Evans is still and Chris Godwin are still getting a lot of of targets and seeing a lot of that red zone opportunity. Now, Julio Jones, on the other hand, has been playing pretty well this season. Calvin Ridley is much more of a dice roll thus far this season, but against the Buccaneers, it should be much less of a dice roll. The Buccaneers defense is very good against the run, but against the pass, not so much. Next game here, we got the Broncos at the Buffalo Bills. Now, no one circles the fucking wagons like the Buffalo Bills, and you want to know who's been circling wagons, has been throwing up, and by throwing up, I mean scoring all them fucking points. That is John Brown of the Buffalo Bills. I'm firing him up and throwing him straight into my lineup. John Brown is going to be able to eviscerate this Broncos defense. We saw the Broncos defense stand strong against Kirk Cousins. You like that last week, but then at the end of the game, they slowly crumbled, they slowly started to fail, and they slowly started to die, and Kirk Cousins was screaming you like that all night long, just like what's going to happen in this game. Josh Allen's going to be able to run all over him, he's going to be able to pass all over him, and John Brown is going to be catching balls all over him. I love John Brown this week, coming off of a humongous game last week against the Miami Dolphins. Now, I'm also going to be starting up Colton Sutton in this matchup. 
Even with Brandon Allen, who does not look all that great, he has still been performing. I love Cortland Sutton in this game, even against a tougher Buffalo Bills defense. I'm going to be sitting down Cole Beasley. Now, obviously, if you're in a deeper league, go ahead, throw Cole Beasley in there. But he has not really, he's like just an 11 points per game kind of guy. If you want him to score more than 11, you that's just not going to fucking happen. You may be smoking on that, smoking on what Josh Gordon's smoking, all right? If Cole Beasley could do that, that would be amazing, but he just hasn't proved that he could do that all year, so if you want to start 10 points, go ahead and lock Cole Beasley in your lineup. If not, you're looking for some upside, stray away from him. Next game here is the Steelers at the Cincinnati Bengals. What a great fucking game here, because the whole wide receiver core of both teams is deceased. I'm going to be starting up James Washington in this game, but he has fucking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven H's next to his name. He's got the eh, because James Washington is the only wide receiver that is alive on the Steelers. If you have the balls if you have the cojones, as they like to say in Mexico, then start James White. Then be, then throw your balls onto the table, throw your dick onto the table, and lay it down and say, fuck it, I'm playing James White. If you if you have the cojones to do it. Personally, I would I would start him because you know I'm a big baller, you know, big baller brand over here. But if you're if you're a bit of a coward, not really a coward, if you're just safe and you're not trying to fucking lose because you played James White and he scores one point, then go ahead and sit him. He's a big boom or bust candidate this week going up against these trash Cincinnati Bengals. Now, Tyler, yeah, Boyd, may, he may be the only alive wide receiver for this fucking Bengals team. On and Tate, probably dead, may somehow play. He got fucking stretched out in the stretcher, and then they're saying he may be able to play this week. Who fucking knows? So you start him if he plays. You're going to be sitting down Juju. Juju's likely dead as well. Deontay Johnson, also fucking dead. I doubt either of those guys play in this game. Next game here, we got the Jacksonville Jaguars at the Tennessee Titans. Now, I like baby shark, do 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 baby shark, do 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 baby shark, because DJ Shark literally went balls to the wall last week with big dick Nick Foles at the helm of the offense and this week against a D vision rival typically a game we see on Thursday night no this is fucking Sunday in the afternoon a game you probably don't want to watch but it doesn't matter because baby shark is going to be able to go against the Tennessee Titans in Tennessee and give them the dirty DJ Chark is going to play amazing with Nick Foles with Gardner Minshew it doesn't fucking matter I love DJ Chark now DD Westbrook honestly I had higher hopes last week for him and but he did not really shit the bed. He scored like nine points. Obviously, could be a lot worse, but did not perform how we thought he would perform. Obviously, with Big Dick Nick throwing him the ball a lot in preseason and week one before he got hurt. I still like D.D. Westbrook, but obviously, you got to temper your expectations after last week's game. Now, I'm going to be sitting down Corey Davis, the worst wide receiver in the NFL, as well as A.J. Brown against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Next game here, we got the Cowboys at the Patriots. Actually, a pretty good game. I'm going to be starting up Amari Cooper in this game. Obviously, it seems like every game, Amari Cooper may be dead, and then he ends up playing. He could be fucking injured right now, and you wouldn't even give a fuck because he's still going to play against the Patriots. The Patriots defense is good, so temper your expectations on Amari Cooper, but I still would throw him out there. Same with Michael Gallup now. Michael Gallup has been playing amazing the last couple of games. Same with Amari Cooper, so I would play both of them, but like I said, this Patriots defense is no joke. Obviously, we saw the Ravens ball out against them before their bye a few weeks ago, so it is entirely possible, especially with an offense that seems like they're as good as the Dallas Cowboys. Now, Julian Edelman is definitely a start for me this week. Julian Edelman is the only wide receiver on the New England Deflatriates that I have any confidence in. Now, I told you guys last week against the Philadelphia Eagles that you should sit all the Patriots wide receivers, and that includes, or besides Julian Edelman, and that included Mohamed Sanu, and I'm getting comments. Nick, you fucking idiot! Mohamed Sanu is so fucking good. You saw him get 12 targets before that bye. You saw Tom Brady feed him. You saw Tom Brady force feed him because that's what he does every single time a wide receiver joins the fucking team. He always does that. You know, that's not actually what you were saying. You were just thinking he was the fucking the greatest thing to come since sliced bread. And then you saw what happened. Mohamed Sanu shit the bed, and I was right. A lot of people were wrong. A lot of people were punching the air because they believed in Mohamed Sanu. Okay, and I don't fucking believe in Mohamed Sanu. I'm not going to sip the Kool-Aid. I'm sitting them again this week against the Dallas Cowboys. Next game here, and what I believe is the final game, just fucking kidding, the Sunday night football matchup between the Packers at the San Francisco 49ers. And I'm going to be starting up Devontae Adams in this game. The 49ers defense is no joke, but Devontae Adams is no joke. He is one of the best wideouts in the NFL, one of the best wideouts in fantasy football when healthy, so I like him this week against the San Francisco 49ers. 
for the 49ers, I would be starting up Mr. Emmanuel Sanders. Now, Emmanuel Sanders played okay last week. He was obviously banged up coming into the game. And I am a bit worried this week for Emmanuel Sanders and Debo Samuel. Now, Debo Samuel, he has the N next to his name because last week he fucking got his arm messed up and he still came in and balled out of control. He played amazing. Emmanuel Sanders played okay. But if George Kittle is in the game, for, mainly, honestly, for Debo, it is a worry for me. If George Kittle ends up getting the start this week, then I am worried for Debo Samuel. Emmanuel Sanders, not as much, but obviously George Kittle is such a huge part of that offense that it takes away from both of those guys. Now, on to the final game between the Ravens at the LA Rams. Now, I'm going to be starting up Cooper Cup in this game. Two weeks ago, Cooper Cup took a shit, got you like zero points. The next week, last week against the Chicago Bears, took a shit, got you like nine points, okay? But this week against the Ravens, I believe this could have potential to be one for the ages. A very high-scoring matchup here of Jared Goff and Sean McVay get their head right out of their ass. Now, Robert Woods, if is, if he plays, then you're going to start him. But is he okay? What happened? Like, on fucking Sunday night, they tell you, or all day, they tell you, Robert Woods is good. And then out of nowhere, Robert Woods is gone. He's not going to play in the game, okay? If he's okay... You go ahead and start him against the Ravens. Brandon Cooks, on the other hand, revived. I don't know how he's alive, but he's alive. And he's going to go ahead and get that start against the Rams. Or not against the Rams. He's on the Rams. Against the Ravens this week. Now, given his health, given he's 100%, go ahead and play him. But I'm still, honestly, kind of scared because he may just die out there again. I'm going to be sitting down Hollywood Brown. Because if I'm being honest with you, this offense is three fucking guys. And they have three different names. It's Lamar Jackson for the Ravens, okay? Mark Ingram, and then this man named Mark Andrews, okay? Two Marks and a Lamar. Uh, you cannot trust Hollywood Brown. He will have games where he fucking destroys, and you'll be like, God damn, I'm pissed I sat him. And you're going to start him the next week, and he's going to play like shit. So I have no read on Hollywood Brown. And I'm just going to let him ride the pine this week against the LA Rams and likely being shadowed by Jalen Ramsey. Thank you guys all for watching this video. If at any point you ended up enjoying, please make sure to click that subscribe button down below. Make sure to check out OverlayDFS.com, link down below in the description. Come play with me. Make sure you click that subscribe button. I love you all. Have a great day. Goodbye, my friend.